Oh my god, there's another shit piece here. Infinite Spiral here again with Toe Jam and Earl for Sega Genesis. So, uh, clearly we... Oh, fuck yeah! Our first Carrot Man. We probably don't have very much money. It's six bucks, so we can identify three presents. Well, I think I'll do this one. Tomato Rain. Okay, that's, uh, neutral. It can help you or hurt you. Let's do... I don't trust this one. Spring Shoes. That was foolish distrust. Spring Shoes are great. <laughs> and Fudge Sunday. Okay, that was a waste. Identifying any of those by using them would have been just fine. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that... You can see why that's useful, because if you can identify the randomizer or the total bummer present without using them, you're good to go. You can drop them every time you see them, and never have to worry about them again. So, there was a ship piece here, correct? Yes, there is. So there's a ship piece, and it's World 4, so there should be... Ah, you gotta hit those diagonals just right, and you can walk over those crevices. But, uh, oh god, that's the sound of Cupid. Cupid's not horribly dangerous. He shoots you with his arrows, and your uh, movement gets randomized. It's, uh, you know, not horrible to deal with, but it's a bit of a nuisance, especially if there's other nasty things around. But, yeah, so World 4, Santa might show up somewhere, and it would be great to sneak up on Santa. And it would also be great if we could find a lot more money. Oh yeah, that's the other thing about promotions. Um, your your health goes up every time you get a promotion too. So your overall health bar grows so you can hold more, which is nice. I wish that your inventory would also grow. That unfortunately does not happen. God damn it. So this game was an absolute childhood favorite, you know, me and my brother and sister, we would just play the absolute shit out of this just over and over again. It was actually the only game that we ever got our mom to play. <laughs> she uh, was not a fan of video games, or is. No, use, no reason to use past tense there, she's still alive. Uh, we'll go ahead and use the tomato rain, why not? How bad could it be? <laughs> so yeah, it can hit enemies. And very occasionally it will, but it can also hit you, which is bad. So where are we? We're somewhere new. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, our, our mom would play this game with us, and, you know, she, she seemed to grasp the concept of getting through the game and using the split screen and everything. That's another thing. This, uh, this game, when you play it two players, it's one of the first games to ever have really functional split screen it has you know when you when you're wandering around in different places it, it splits the screen like you'd expect but when you're actually together it brings the screen together again so you're on one screen and it was you know, a pretty unique innovation for its time i'm sure that sort of thing is pretty common now but uh at least if you see split screen in a game at all i know that's uh sort of been on its way out for a while so we've got two of these red ones i'm gonna I'm gonna use one. We got... He said jamming, and then oops, too many because we were standing on the present. So, whatever happened was good. Ah, phone. Excellent. Okay, big world out there. So... Oh, it was food. Okay. Yeah, food can be good or bad. Sometimes it's, you know, pizza or fudge sundae or things like that. Fudge sundae is obviously its own present as well. But sometimes it's moldy cheese or rotten cabbage. Um, that thing, I don't, we used one before, or identified one before, I don't remember what that was, so let's just drop this, pick that up just to see what it was. It was tomato rain, okay. Failure to press buttons correctly. There we go. We'll pick this up again, and then we will also use, Earthling is another neutral present, it can be you know, one of the nasty, horrible ones, or it can be one of the neutral, or, or beneficial ones. But there are way, way more nasty ones than there are useful ones, so I'm just going to drop the Earthling present. I don't see a need to gamble with that, especially when I only have one dollar, so... <laughs> oh god, bees. Horrible, horrible bees. Bees are one of the worst enemies, because they 
aggressively follow you. They don't go at random like the imp. They very actively try to get you and knock you off the edge or kill you directly. Very unpleasant. And there are... <clears throat> There are actually two types of bees in this game. I cannot for the life of me remember what the other ones are called because that term isn't commonly used anymore. They, they used to be commonly called this, but now they're just called Africanized bees. They're... What, what mad bees? I, I, I can't remember. I don't trust that mailbox. <laughs> I am inherently mistrustful of all mailboxes in this game. Seems okay. Nothing I want. Couldn't afford anything anyway. Don't know why I bothered to look. So, oh, Santa! Yes! Okay, so we're gonna sneak up on Santa. And he looks up. Okay. He looks up and tries to see anything every once in a while. And if you are moving when he does that. Great, he dropped a random present. <laughs> well. You know what? I'm gonna spring shoes and just get rid of this fucking Cupid. Get the fuck out of here. Now you're just a baby. And now you're popped. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so what did we pick up there? It was this, really? It looked flat and orange from what I could see. I guess it was just because of the random one there. Uh We'll eat some food, why not? Oh good, it was delicious. I don't know what it was. <laughs> So random presents are exactly what they sound like. They are random every time. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes it's a randomizer. <laughs> a lot of randomness in this game. Uh, I don't remember what that was. It was food. I don't need more food. God damn it. Fuck you, hula girl. <laughs> I'll spring shoe my way over to that shit piece up there. Hello. Okay. You're mine. What's it gonna be? Gonna be the Righteous Rap Master Capsule. Excellent. Jam in. I think we said Jaman a lot when we would see that. Yeah, I grew up during the era when uh, Cool Runnings had come out, so Jamaican stuff was really, really cool. <laughs> ah, the 90s. Yeah, this game clearly has an extremely 90s vibe to it. The whole bright colors and sort of... Oh god, that was the worst jump ever. I didn't think I had the spring shoes still. Alright, well I'll see you in a minute when I get back up to World 4. <laughs> Just torture. <laughs> Alright, so we're back on World 4. And I guess we never explored this direction, so let's do that. Do we know where the elevator is yet? No, we don't. It's probably over here somewhere. We already found Santa once, and we're still full of presents. All right, we got another promotion. Now we are a Poindexter, so this should give us an extra life. Indeed. So that's always good. The more lives you can get, the better, obviously. No need to explain that. We're going to use some super high tops, because... We've got a bunch of those, you know, three being a bunch, and now only two. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, let's find that elevator and just get the fuck out, because, uh, there is no other reason to be here. We do need, how much money do we have? Just one dollar still. Well, what's that? I don't know. You know what, I'm going to drop the random present. There's no need to hang on to that. So, well shit, maybe the elevator isn't over here. Where the hell is it? Damn it. Okay, it's down in that big blob of purple over there. So. That probably doesn't lead there, so I'm going to go down this way. There was a little outcropping of land that poked into the purple square, and it might have turned into one of these little, you know, randomly appearing bridges. Wish I had more money. I would talk to you. But there's also a chance that it wouldn't have turned into one of them at all, and it would have been a total waste of time to go over there. So, we just went this way instead. <coughs> Now, 
Almost. Okay. Oh, more presents. I don't know if I know what that big one is. I'm gonna use one of these white ones. It's terrifying. Root beer. Okay. So, root beer gives you a tiny, tiny little bit of health, and then it makes you burp for like half an hour. <laughs> Which, if you're trying to sneak past things, is not very useful. Okay, checking the map again. I think that's food. Yeah, that's... <sighs> Wait. Okay, never mind. I thought I saw the top of the elevator poking out of one of the purple tiles, but I'm probably mistaken. <clears throat> Don't know why I decided to take that route, but I did. So water... You know, obviously you can swim. Really, it seems more like you're walking under the water. But, uh... It's not always a good idea, because sometimes there are sharks. God damn it, fucking hula girl. <laughs> Why are there so many of them? I don't care about the phone. I've already uncovered almost the entire level. There's the elevator. Okay. Excellent. And fucking bees, of course. And there's the phone. Why not? Sure, just taunt me with a phone surrounded by bees. Well, we can walk over a couple of feet and grab that purple tile. Oh, god damn fucking bees. Get... Uh, maybe, maybe we won't. I mean, it's right there. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> as long as these bees don't cut me off. Okay. We don't know what that yellow one is. It's a rain cloud. Shit. Well, uh, why did I pick it up? That was dumb. Rain clouds are terrible. Because they zap you with lightning. You can hide from them in the water. But while you're underwater, your health slowly drains. As though, you know, as though it was a health bar. God. And when it empties, you die. Uh, that was really sad. I was trying to get out of the water. Just failed miserably. So, onward to World 5. Eh, another ship piece. We're getting these really, really fast. Usually, they don't show up quite this frequently. So, we might finish this game a lot sooner than a normal playthrough. Which is sort of fine with me, because, uh... You know, the faster we get it done, then, uh... The less chance we'll have failed miserably, and the less chance this Sega Genesis will have to freeze on me again. That really, really sucked. Uh... I... get really indecisive about using presents, because, you know, it's dangerous. I'll use this purple one. Cool, slingshot. Awesome. So yeah, sling slingshots are great. As long as you're fighting ground-based enemies, not, uh, flying cherubs of doom. <laughs> so, this game was made by a guy called Greg Johnson, and, uh, the timing of making of recording this is actually really interesting because I was planning on making these this video or these uh, this series anyway because it came as a special request from a viewer, but uh, it just so happened that right when it was time to do it, the uh, Greg Johnson, the guy that made this, he just finished a Kickstarter to come back and make a, an actual sequel to it. Um, it's really interesting timing. Now, the this game actually did have a direct sequel on Sega Genesis. Don't know where that phone is. Um, but it, they, uh, Sega, the producers... No, there's the phone. Sweet. <clears throat> and there is the ship piece uncovered over there. That's why phones are useful. Because they tell you where stuff is sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Sega came in... And they demanded a lot of uh, changes be made because they didn't know how to market the game. <laughs> I don't know, I guess they weren't really happy with how this first one performed. It, I guess, didn't sell very well when it was initially released, although it did go on to become sort of a cult classic. But, uh, yeah, so they they had a lot of changes made to the second one. Hyper Funk Thruster! And it, it ended up being a, a side-scrolling platforming game, and it completely just changed the feel. It was not anywhere near the same kind of a game, and, you know, I, I didn't play it until a lot, af a lot later in life, after it had come out, and 
I'd already been completely enamored by this game. <clears throat> so I never really get, had a full appreciation for it. I know a lot of people actually really liked the second one. And uh, some people it's the only one that they've played. But uh, yeah, Greg Johnson and Mark Boersanger were the guys that made this and that one. And uh, they they were never really set. Fuck. <laughs> they were never really satisfied with the results that they came out with on that second one. So later on, they actually tried again to make the sequel to this that they always wanted to make. And that was uh, in 2001, I believe. And they were making it for Xbox, the first one. Not the Xbox One, but the original Xbox. That, I'm not gonna pick that up, that's Tomato Rain. I know better. And uh, again, it was published by Sega. And again, Sega came in at the last minute and had them change a bunch of the core aspects of the game so that it, again, turned out to be a completely different game than what they had intended. So, now that uh, Greg Johnson has gone through... Oh, fuck me! I had two randomizers in there. Okay. <laughs> well, at least I hadn't identified either of the really useful things that I... Well, th any, any of the three useful presents that I wanted. Shit. So I don't know if it actually... Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does. It absolutely randomizes what types of presents you have as well as what they are. Hey, well, that's... Hey, cool, that was a promotion that we just opened. <laughs> now we're a peanut! It's, uh, uh, I don't know what the deal with being a peanut is. I don't know if that meant something in the night. Oh, fuck, okay. Rocket skates are good. I'm glad that we identified them. But... They're also a little dangerous, because you can go zooming off the edge of the map real easy. And that is not something that's uh, conducive to useful progression in the game. Alright, so... Is there a ship piece? No, there's nothing. We're just super far from the elevator, so... <clears throat> I will rejoin you when I get there. Alright! Got to the elevator and found a hamburger immediately, which we needed, because of that fucking dentist. God, I hate those mad dentists. They're sons of bitches. But okay. So, onward, onward to World 6. And that should conclude this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe, and, uh, you know, that'll show up in your subscriber feed. And it'll be great. You'll love it. Really, I promise. Anyway, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.